Today now on turn Cracking up. Cases. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. For those of you that don't know us, we are Cam and Allie, and this is Cracking Cases. We just want to, first of all, say thank you to everybody for being so patient with us. Um, I know that everybody is excited and wanting to see everything that we were able to do while we were in Kingsport and Hawkins County this weekend. Um, we are just trying to, we had a whole lot more footage than what we even expected to have while we were down there. And so we're trying to compile it all together and have it in a presentable manner for everybody to be able to kind of get a feel for everything that we saw while we were down there. Um, we just want to give everybody a good view of what life is like around here and where we live and what we saw. Just more clarity to the whole thing. Yeah, and we're, we're still learning how to edit and we're just kind of learning as we go along, so... We want to just thank everybody for their patience, and I promise you're going to get to see everything that we saw. We're just still working on it, and we're working really hard on it. All right, guys. Um, what we're going to do on this video is we're going to show you some stuff we went that were that was kind of weird to us, and we wanted to go there while we were down there. It was very important for us um, to go to this one specific place because there had been some questions about a specific person named JD and he everybody well a lot of people feel like he could be a suspect in Summer's disappearance and we just kind of wanted to shed some light on that for those of y'all who haven't seen the video we did with Benny on Blood Money TV uh, this is before we started our channel um, we broke down all the evidence we had and, uh, on Mr. JD, and we're going to show you all that through this, too. A little... A little recap. A little recap of it. So, who is JD? JD is from Georgia. He bought land across from the Wells property. He was camping up there, um... There's there's not a house on that property, so while, after he bought the property, he came down here and was camping on it, or what he thought was his property, but it turns out he was actually camping across the property lines on another property who, that belongs to some of the neighbors of the Wells. Right, and while Mr. Uh, JD was up on the property, he had had a altercation with some other property owners, and they had a uh, discrepancy on where the, the line was, the property line. Um, so uh, the police were called. Uh, we actually have the screenshot and, uh, you know, of, of the woman who had had... The altercation with Mr. JD right here. She had posted this comment on something about Summer um, in regards to what they had experienced with JD while he was there camping. Um, they had called the cops and basically the cops had came out there and explained to them or explained to JD that the other people had owned the property. The property had been in their family for 200 years. So he, the police had told him, you know, they would know where the property lines are and basically told him that he needed to leave. Not leave, but just to move over back to right, his move side. Right, back to his side of the property. Um, while the police were there, they asked him to identify himself. He would not show ID. He, um... Which is strange to me. If you if you own property up there, and you're trying to settle a dispute, you would ID yourself for uh, records for law enforcement to see. Hey, I, he owns this side, they own that side, but uh, he didn't. I mean, basically, if you have nothing to hide, then why would you not want to tell who you are? Yeah. Oh, it's also. It was also stated he had dead tags on there. I don't. 
have anything to show you on that part, but that was uh, stated quite a few times I'd seen. Uh, also, um, before we get into the the dog Elvis, and that's part of his alibi, what we got at the Roadway Inn was, um, you know, that's just what we could get from the outside. Out of all the places that we visited in Hawkins County, this place uh, gave me bad vibes. This place sketched me out. I didn't want to go inside there. And you'll see in our future videos, we went inside some places. And uh, we asked around. But not here. I didn't feel it was it, it was the place to do that. Yeah, we just kind of... From the moment that we drove onto the property at the hotel, we just had a bad feeling. And so we didn't get out and really do a lot there. We hopped out and took some pictures and some video clips and We, we looked left. at the whole property. <laughs> right, we we, we made sure that we knew what we were going to be talking about, how the pillars were and how they lined up, all that. And you'll see that coming up here in just a second. So we get to the dog Elvis uh, alibi. So JD has this dog named Elvis. Um, he had actually posted a picture of Elvis at Ben Hill on Ben Hill Road. Um, he actually posted it and said Elvis at Ben Hill Hill. This was on June 14th. It looks like he posted it that night. Um, after everything started coming out about Summer going missing, um, he had posted a picture of Elvis that stated, My Buddy Elvis 2016. Well, um, he then later changed that or at least the description on the picture, and changed it to time stamp June 15th at Roadway Inn near Churchill, Tennessee, late in the afternoon. So this was him basically trying to establish an alibi for where he was on the evening that Summer went missing. So I, I guess people had started kind of talking about, well, he said that this picture was taken in 2016. Why is he saying now that... This was at the Roadway Inn in Churchill on June 15th, 2021. So he then went in and he edited what he had wrote and put, My buddy Elvis took up with us February 2016. So he's basically stating there that what he meant by My buddy Elvis 2016 was that they had actually gotten the dog in 2016. We have found some discrepancies on that as well. Um, it looks like there is an old picture from a, tr a trail camera that has a dog that looks pretty much exactly like Elvis that was dated for February 7th, 2012. And so that would mean, if that's true, that he had actually had, had Elvis since 2012 and this whole thing about getting Elvis in 2016 is a lie. Right. Okay. And so we're going to show you the picture we took right here. And if you can... I, I want <laughs> Go to... Go ahead. I want to clarify that there are multiple gray pillars in front of this hotel, but there is only one pillar in in front of the whole hotel that has a gutter attached to it. And we made sure to look at all of the pillars there. And as you can see in the picture of Elvis the dog that he posted, it was in front of the pillar with the gutter on it. Right. And in our picture, you will see that the parking blocks in the parking lot are moved. The lines in the parking lot are moved, and uh, it seems to be a, to have been done a while ago. Uh, you can see that there's been new asphalt poured down because uh, if it was the same, you would still be able to see the the old lines in the pavement. Um, even the look, you can look at the differences on the differences on the uh, sidewalk. 
Yeah, it looks like they have actually redone the sidewalk since the picture of Elvis was taken. All right. Um, and I'll let you be the judge. You look at look at it, and and you make your um, your uh, own opinion. Own opinions, right? Uh, like she said, the guttering has been fixed. Sidewalk is uh, looks a lot different. Yeah. Lines are redone. Parking blocks are in different spaces. Uh, you know, just you can do it. We'll we'll put it up there where you can compare it. And, I mean, anybody can say, well, maybe they made all these changes <clears throat> in the last two months since June 15th, whenever he took that picture and the day that Summer went missing. Well, that might be true. But in my life, any time that I have seen new lines painted on any road or parking lot, even the interstate, you know, wherever, usually the lines will stay looking pretty fresh for quite a while probably about a year yeah <clears throat> or longer probably a year or longer and you can tell in this picture that we took that you can see there's a lot of cracks in the paint and it just doesn't look like they are very fresh sidewalks a different color as well the and that could be the resolution of his camera and ours but uh i believe I believe it's uh, from a way different time. That's our that's our point of view. Right. And even the sidewalk, um, the sidewalk seems to have some cracks in it. And unless it was just a poor job on the person that did the sidewalks, I would feel like there wouldn't be that many cracks in it if it was a brand new sidewalk exactly. that had just been done in the last two months. So I just feel like... This was th these changes to this property have probably been made a while back prior than June fifteenth. June fifteenth. So, I oh. mean, I don't know. This hotel was closed down for a time, mm -hmm. a period of time in two thousand twenty. It will show you that right here. So, we have an article that was posted from the Churchill Police. This was actually on their Twitter account on June 5th, 2020. It says, in accordance with TCA 29-3-101, the Churchill Inn at 1142 Volunteer Street has been recognized as a nuisance and dangerous to public safety. The establishment, establishment is now closed. There is to be no one on the property until further notice. We then have a news, news article. article from WJHL, which was also posted on June 5th, 2020, that is talking about how the property has been shut down for child abuse, for drug activity, for attempt, uh, attempted murder charges, uh, so on, so on. And we can probably give you the link to that in the description. Um, okay, now we will go to the hoax school shooting and the map. Actually, let's go here to the map. Uh, this map actually shows from the roadway in to the Wells property. And, uh, you know, we're not going to focus on the distance there right now in this, but he says it's 22 minutes away uh, and 14 miles, 14 miles. We actually drove this when we were down there. And, and it does take about 20 minutes to get from the Wells property to the hotel. But that is basically just because driving from the Wells property, it's a mountain road and it's curvy and exactly. it's back in the country. So it, I don't know. Um, I know in other parts of the world it's it doesn't take as long to drive places but around here these roads back in the country it takes a while because they're all very curvy and, and they are straight up and down in some places and a 90 degree turns and it, it's just wild right and then you actually once you get off that road you have to go through the actual town here and there's quite a bit of traffic in the in the town right. so 
that's why it takes about 22 minutes to drive this area. Okay, but we're going to zoom in on the location dot of the roadway in. Okay, and we're going to go to the square that we're going to draw around right here and show you this big square right it's probably 150, 200 yards away from the roadway in. That is Volunteer High School. This is the high school that the hoax shooting was called into. And uh, we had stayed in it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago is when this hoax shooting was called in. And the reason I found that relevant is because every police department was dispatched to this high school uh, that's... Uh, that is uh, Churchill Police Department, Mount Carmel Police Department, uh, TBI, uh, Hawkins, Hawkins County. County Sheriff's Office, Sullivan County Sheriff's Office, uh, Kingsport City Police, uh, Kingsport City Police, and the Tennessee State Troopers. Tennessee State Troopers. Um, there was a SWAT team that was there. Pretty much every law enforcement was dispatched personnel here. in that area was dispatched to this high school on the day that this shooting was called in. And what my idea was, and this is total speculation, but I was thinking, you know, if 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 every officer is here dealing with this and this call was made from out of state, may, let me make this clear. I don't know who did it. We don't know if it was a child or an adult, but it was made from out of state. And if you have every officer dispatched to this area... One location. One location. What's going on everywhere else? You could do anything you wanted. You you could go anywhere, do anything you wanted, and not have to worry about a police presence. There has been multiple people that have stated, well, maybe somebody... And we're not saying that this is even connected to Summer. We just think it's quite a coincidence considering... And I don't believe in coincidences. This location. Um, we don't have a lot of high-profile events that take place in this area. So, considering in Hawkins County, two high-profile cases have happened within a two-month time period. It just seems like they could be in some way, shape, or form connected to connected. one another. You be the judge of that, though. But it has been stated that maybe someone could have called this hoax shooting in just to be able if they have summer they could have used that opportunity with all of the police being dispatched to the high school to move her they could have moved her moved her body um or you know just done something they shouldn't have let's just put it yeah, that right way. something that they shouldn't have been doing right but you be the judge of that. Right. We will let you guys kind of make your own opinion as of that. And we just and we just wanted to put this out first because we felt like this was important for people to see. There's going to be some stuff coming out later tonight, I believe, that's going to uh, have theories and everything. And we wanted to put ours out there, too. So, uh, and it's not necessarily our complete theory and it's not our total uh, look on everything. But this is just... A good place, I think, that that people should look. Just to, And if you want to say it's cleared, it can be cleared. Okay, guys. While we were editing this, we realized that we had forgotten to talk about one of the most important parts that we had meant to talk about during this video. And that was JD's appearance change. So, three days after Summer had went missing on June 15th, um, JD had posted a picture on his Facebook of him with a completely shaved head and he had shaved his beard off and he had just completely changed his appearance. Right. That was summer went missing on the 15th. He posted this on June 18th. Right. So it was three days later. Um, you know, it's not necessarily strange that somebody would make changes to their appearance you know, women will frequently change their hairstyle or their hair color, and so will men. But his appearance change was quite drastic. He looks different than pretty much any other person I have ever seen after just shaving a beard or something. He just completely looks like a new person. And we have seen this a lot with 
people who have committed crimes, they'll change their appearance drastically. And not saying that he's committed a crime, it just kind of makes it look suspicious that he would make such a drastic change. Especially three days after this. Right. Uh, we're going to throw those up. We got a comparison uh, together for y'all to see. And we also wanted to add something that we don't have because he set his Facebook to private. We searched for it, looked for screenshots, and we just can't seem to find them. But he had posted missing children um, multiple times a day for, you know, I don't know how long back, but it was a long time. Yeah, he was constantly posting missing children, missing people all over the United States, and he would post up to 67 times a day that I had seen, and on the specific day that Summer had went missing, it's also a good thing to note that he had only made one Facebook post, which was odd for him and how he usually was on Facebook all the time. Right. But whenever Summer went missing, he did not post a single thing on his Facebook about her missing. That just seems odd considering he would always be posting missing people, but he didn't post anything on his new neighbor that's missing. Right. Okay, guys, we just wanted to add this part in, and we're going to go back to the original one. Uh, Mr. JD said that he was, uh, he had spoke to an officer from the TBI and also that he had spoken to two FBI agents over the phone, and his exact words were, and I believe I've been cleared. Well, first of all, um, Ronnie Lawson, Hawkins County Sheriff, has said that no one has been cleared at this point, and that Everyone's everyone is still a suspect. Therefore, he can't really say that he's been cleared. Um, and I don't know of anybody that's ever been cleared from a phone call. Right. Second of all, I don't believe that, and I, I don't know how the FBI works, but it just seems to me that they have the money, they have the resources. And jurisdiction. They have the jurisdiction to be able to go anywhere within the United States. And if they, they, they just have the ability to go and question anyone that they feel they need to question in person. So I just don't know why they would clear somebody over the phone. It just seems to me that they would want to be in person talking to that person. That way that they could maybe see their actions and just be able to see if maybe they're given any clues as to whether they are lying or telling the truth just by their body language alone. Right. And so that's pretty much all we got for you guys. We wanted to put this out. We got more coming. Uh, be patient everywhere we went was uh we were allowed to go we were on public property the whole time that we were down there um in every and we did video a lot of the same places that other people have videoed um however just because we are local we feel like we could give a little bit more right to where we were at and kind of explain it a little bit differently than other people have yeah. been able to explain it right we went in places too yeah, we went in and spoke with people who work at different places, and we've got a lot of stuff coming for you guys that hopefully will add a little bit to what we already know, and it might open your eyes a little bit about some different things. So, okay. With that being said, just please be patient with us. We are working very hard to get everything out there. Um, like I said, we're still learning how to edit and do all of this fancy stuff, so it might take us a little bit of time, but we are trying to get it out there as quickly as possible for everybody to see. So just be kind, um, be patient, it's coming, and we're going to give you what we got. Um, let's close on a prayer for summer. We do that every time. That's uh, the right thing to do. We need to be prayer warriors for, uh, for people in need. And so, right now, summer is our number one priority with this. We just want to be able to help her to come home or at least be found that way that she can have peace. Right. So, dear Heavenly Father, we lift up Summer and our prayers. Her name's Summer Moon Utah Wells. And, Lord, we just lift up this beautiful little girl to you. We ask that you bring justice to her. 
And, uh, Lord, we have the hope that you can perform miracles. Lord, let this little girl come home. Let this girl be, uh, be just not, not forgotten. We want to keep lifting up her name. Heavenly Father, let us always stand with good intentions in our heart. And, uh, Lord, the main thing is just bring Summer home. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. And remember, everybody wants to see justice. But justice doesn't have to be carried out with hate.